Hello, in this video we'll talk about glycogen metabolism. Glycogen is actually a polymer of glucose and it's a complex polysaccharide. It's also branched. In this video we'll look at the synthesis and the breakdown of glycogen. So glucose gets converted to glucose 6-phosphate with the help of the enzyme hexokinase. Now this glucose 6-phosphate eventually forms pyruvate and ATP is generated in this process and we all know this is glycolysis. When we have enough amount of glucose in our body, let's say after a meal, our body would generate energy out of it. But after a point of time, there would be too much of glucose and body really don't need that much of energy. So what it would do? It would stop the process of glycolysis and divert this glucose 6-phosphate to create glucose 1-phosphate with the help of the enzyme phosphoglucomutase. Now glucose 1-phosphate would be further converted into UDP glucose and this UDP glucose can be attached to a growing glycogen chain with the help of the enzyme glycogen synthase. So this process is known as glycogeno glycogenesis. That means creation of glycogen. Now glycogenesis takes place when glucose level is really high, let's say after a meal when we have taken a lot of glucose in our food. Now glycogenesis is stimulated by several hormones like insulin. So glycogen is metabolized in liver and in the muscle. Actually when we have too much of glucose, we store that glucose for the future in format of glycogen such that whenever it is necessary, glycogen can be broken down and we can get the energy. So, glycogen synthesis can only take place when there is an existing primer and glycogen synthase can attach residues on these growing primer. So, initially, a protein glycogenin, which is a 37 kilodalton protein, ensures the polymerization happens swiftly. And then, Eventually, glycogen synthase add up more residues to form this complex network of glycogen. The key enzyme that regulates this process is glycogen synthase, which has two conformations, inactive and an active conformation. In the inactive conformation, it is heavily phosphorylated at the C-terminal region. So you can clearly imagine there would be certain kinase residues that triggers this phosphorylation process and there could be phosphatase residues that triggers the dephosphorylation reaction and thereby activating or inactivating this enzyme. So it's like a nice toggle switch which allows the enzyme to get activated or inactivated in a context dependent fashion. Let's talk about the context and the hormonal regulation brings us to the context. Several hormones such as insulin positively regulate these phosphatase enzyme and thereby making the glycogen synthase active by removing the phosphate residues. Now, other enzymes such as kinase can inactivate glycogen synthase. Point to be noted, other hormones such as glucagon and epinephrine is a negative regulator of these phosphatase enzyme, whereas it is a positive regulator for kinase enzyme. So, moral of the story, glucagon or epinephrine tends to inactivate the glycogen synthase enzymes and preventing glycogen synthesis pathway. Now, glycogen is like a fixed deposit of glucose. When we have too much of money, we store it in the bank for future. This is like our savings, right? So, glycogen is also stored for the future and whenever we need energy, glycogen can be broken down in muscle and liver to generate energy. And this breakdown happens with the help of several enzymes and the end product of this is glucose 6-phosphate. Glucose 6-phosphate can then further channelized into glycolysis pathway to generate energy. So it's energy on demand. And this process of breaking down of glycogen is known as glycogenolysis. In starved state, body utilize glycogen reserve to generate energy. So obviously glycogenolysis happens when we are starving for long. Site of glycogenesis is muscle and liver. And the enzymes that are required is glycogen phosphorylase, debranching enzyme and phosphoglucomutase. In a moment, we would try to understand how these enzymes work. So first of all, let's talk about the glycogen phosphorylase, which breaks down the glycosidic linkage and free up glucose residues 
in the solution. So the D, the, so these phosphorylase enzymes act on the glycogen chain and freeing up glucose residues. Glycogen phosphorylase has a pyridoxal phosphate as a uh, coenzyme, and there are specific residues in the um, and which has formed a sieve base with the lysine 680 amino acid. And this is crucial for the functionality of glycogen phosphorylase enzyme. So if we delve deep into the biochemistry, we can see the alpha 14 glycosidic linkage actually mounts a nucleophilic attack on the phosphate group in glycogen phosphorylase and thereby breaking the linkage and forming a transient linkage with the enzyme. Later on, this glucose 1-phosphate, which is now linked with the glycogen phosphorylase enzyme, would be freed up. Point to be noted that glycogen phosphorylase comes to an halt when it is four residues away from the branch point. Now, at the branch point, glycogen phosphorylase would be replaced by the debranching enzyme. Debranching enzyme can cleave the branch point because it can break down 1,6 glycosidic linkages. Once debranching enzyme has done its job and removing the branch point gly uh, glucose, then the glycogen phosphorylase again can be recruited to the linear chain and it can do its job, break down glycosidic linkage and free up glucose. Ultimately, phosphoglucomutase would convert this glucose 1-phosphate into glucose 6-phosphate. So there is a quick nucleophilic attack which, from, uh, which, uh, which leads to a production of glucose 1,6-bisphosphate as a transient uh, species and eventually glucose 6-phosphate is generated from glucose 1-phosphate. Once glucose 6-phosphate is generated, it can be channeled into glycolysis pathway. Now, let's take an example in real life where, glycolysis, where glycogenolysis takes place. Let's say you are chased by a mad dog. So, if you stop running, the dog would probably bite you. So your skeletal muscle need to contract at very high pace. So your skeletal muscle need to burn a lot of glucose for energy. But let's say you haven't eaten in last four hours. So obviously you don't have too much of glucose in your bloodstream. So where would your muscle get the glucose from? Actually, your muscle has the reserve of glycogen. Immediately, there would be signal that would break down the glycogen into glucose that would help you to generate ATP and evade these kind of situation. And this is kind of a flight or fight response. In these circumstances, there are hormonal regulation like epinephrine or adrenaline. You must, must have heard about adrenaline rush. So adrenaline binds to the beta adrenergic receptor on your skeletal muscles. It leads to cyclic AMP elevation, which activates protein kinase A. Protein kinase A subsequently activate phosphorylase kinase which eventually activates glycogen phosphorylase. And as we have seen so far, glycogen phosphorylase is the key enzyme which breaks down glycogen into glucose. So it, breaking, it is breaking down glycogen into readily active form, utilizable format of energy. And thereby, our muscles could be fueled and we can evade a stressful situation. So this video kind of tells us how glycogen metabolism is relevant for our own physiology. So glycogen breakdown also supplies glucose to our brain while we are starving. While we are starving, we, do, we have low level of blood glucose. But our brain cannot stop working because brain need glucose for its functioning. In that circumstance, glucose, I mean, the glycogen from the liver is broken down into glucose residues and that is channelized to the brain for its energy. So I hope this video was useful and you get an overall picture that how glycogen metabolism takes place and how it is relevant for our physiological functions. So if you like this video, please, uh, please kind of support my channel in Patreon. If you are an Indian viewer, please support me on Bhim UPI. Your small contribution, even 10 rupees contribution, contribution would create a lot of difference and it, it means a lot for me. So don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can take my course in Unacademy. Using my code AP10 will get, give you a 10% discount. Thank you.